The RPB PX4 Air is one of the powered air purifying respirators, or PAPRs for short, that are utilized at St. Mary Mercy Hospital, Livonia. This video will explain how to safely use and maintain this device to ensure the safety of the wearer when working in airborne isolation. You'll need to first make sure you have all the necessary supplies on hand. You'll need the RPB unit, the air hose, the hood, a fully charged battery, and an airflow indicator. There are three ways to check the battery's charge. While it is on the dock, there is a battery indicator. If all three lights are lit, the battery is fully charged. According to the RPB company, a fully charged battery can last up to 13 hours. To remove the battery, push down on the green button and lift up from that side. On the underside of the battery, you can push the green soft key to display the current charge. The battery attaches to the bottom of the papper. Matching the three metal prongs on the unit to their counterparts on the battery will give you the correct alignment. Hook the battery to the plastic hinges on the side of the papper and swing it into position until you feel and hear a click. If you need to remove the battery, depress the green button and pull away from the unit. The power button is located on the side of the papper. Pushing it will cause the unit to power on and run a short self-test where the lights will illuminate in turn. When the self-test is finished, you will see the lights on the top of the button glow green. These are the battery life indicators, and this is the third method of identifying the charge of the battery. The three lights on the bottom of the power button are the airflow indicator lights. One light is level one, the lowest airflow setting, two lights for level two, and three lights for the highest airflow setting at level three. You'll need to test the airflow before every use of the papper. You'll need the airflow indicator to do this. On the indicator is a marking for min flow or minimum airflow. In the tube, you'll notice a small white ball. When the indicator is attached to the unit, the airflow should float that ball at or above the min flow line. Power on the papper and insert the airflow indicator into the port on the top of the unit. With the papper sitting on a flat surface, the airflow indicator should be positioned straight up. It may take up to 60 seconds for airflow to stabilize. As soon as the ball floats above the min flow line, you can be certain your papper is producing enough airflow to provide the wearer with appropriate protection. If the ball is not floating at or above the line, you can increase the airflow setting by tapping the power button. This will increase your airflow level to two or three as you tap the button. Next, inspect the air hose. Look for any tears in the hose and make sure the rubber O-ring is in place at the threaded end. Inspect the hood for any tears in the material or cracks in the visor. If you find any issues with either the hose or the hood, do not use them. Obtain new parts. To attach the hose to the papper, take the end that has two plastic nubs on opposite sides of the hose. They will match with two slots in the papper's port. Insert the hose into the port and twist it clockwise to lock it in place. To attach the hose to the hood, take the threaded end of the hose and locate the opening on the back of the hood. Screw the hose into the hood until you meet resistance. To don the papper, clip the unit around your waist using the attached belt. The unit should sit comfortably on your lower back. Pull the hood over your head. Inside the hood, there is a cord that can be cinched tight to form around your neck for further protection and stability. Straighten out the apron, and you have successfully donned your papper. To remove the papper, unclip the belt, and then, by taking hold of the hose on the back of the hood, pull the hood off and away from your face, not up and over. This will minimize the risk of passing the contaminated papper hood over your face. After use, the papper, hose, and hood need to be cleaned using the gray top wipes. Use multiple wipes to clean the unit, the belt, the hose, and outside and inside of the hood. Detach the battery from the papper and replace it on the charger. When not in use, batteries should always be left on the charger. Troubleshooting. If at any point while inspecting the device you find tears, breaks, or cracks in the hose or hood, do not use that item. 
obtain new supplies before entering airborne isolation. If the airflow is insufficient when using the airflow indicator, check the battery charge. If it is fully charged, increase the airflow settings to level 2 or 3. If while wearing the PAPR, the battery nears depletion or the airflow is unable to maintain the necessary pressure, the PAPR will emit an alarm and begin to vibrate. If this occurs, leave the area immediately and address the issue. If the battery is low, the battery indicator lights on the unit will flash red. If the airflow is the issue, the lights below the power button will begin blinking red. If airflow is low, the filters may need replaced. As the filter nears its capacity, the PAPR has to work harder to pull air through the increasingly clogged filter. First check the pre-filter. It is located under the green panel on the PAPR. Open it by lifting from the bottom of the panel. The white filter paper is the unit's pre-filter. It collects the larger dust and debris from the air before the air is pulled through the HEPA filter. It should be changed anytime there is an airflow issue or if it is visibly discolored or dirty. These filters are available on your unit. To change the filter, simply take a new, clean pre-filter, hook it to the plastic prongs on the green cover, and snap the cover back into place. To access the HEPA filter, push the large green button on the side opposite the power button and lift the cover off the unit. If the HEPA filter is damaged or visibly dirty, it will need to be replaced. Contact your manager or Biomed about getting a new HEPA filter. The RPB PX4 Air is a useful tool for healthcare providers at St. Mary Mercy Hospital. Knowing how to properly use and maintain this equipment will provide the protection against airborne illness that is needed to safely provide care to our patients.